All right. So by popular demand, we're going to be doing um, a wrap up of the group work uh, for last week and the group work for this week. So um, we're going to be talking about the trig three group work and the trig four group work. We're going to try to talk about it as quick as possible. Um, I want to make sure that you understand what's going on. So in trig three, I had you draw the unit circle and I had you draw these rectangles. Um, and the reason why I had you draw these rectangles is if we take and we label um, some points here, and so if I label this point and this point and corresponding this point and this point, you can see that if we connect them, we get this sort of really nice rectangle. And what's really nice about this rectangle is uh, because this line and this line are both um, horizontal, uh, the two points up at the top and the two points down at the bottom actually have the same y values. The ones up top have um, the positive y value and the ones on, on the bottom have the negative. And uh, because the left and right sides of this are also uh, vertical, what we have are we have the x values are the same for the two right and they're the same for the two left and uh, the right and left points have you know uh, equal but opposite signed x values and so when you were um, drawing this you should have probably labeled these points x comma y negative x comma y negative x negative y and x negative y. Right? And these would actually have values for each of the angles that I had you work on, but um, the main point was that um, the two at the top have the same y value, the two at the bottom have the same y value. That the ones at the top are whatever the positive value is, and the ones at the bottom are the negative value. Um, and then at the right and the left have the same, and they're equal and opposite. And then all of these were based on some sort of angle. Right? And so here's this that, this, and that. Now, normally when you measure an angle, you start at the x-axis and you circle around until you get to the angle you're looking at. All right, so if we're down here in quadrant three, normally you would take this theta to be your angle. And that's fine, except if I ask you to tell me, you know, what is cosine of theta and what is sine of theta, it, um, it turns out that uh, you would have to know what cosine and sine were down in quadrant three. And I don't think that's useful. Um, nobody thinks that's useful. It's why we have reference angles. And it turns out that um, you can notice, if you look really close, these four angles that I'm highlighting are all actually the same. Um, they're, they're the angle of inclination above the x-axis or the angle of declination below the x-axis. And so you can see that um, if, you, if you look at the first quadrant only, right, let's highlight where I want you to be looking, if you look up here, um, that x and y value is being repeated all the way around the circle. The only thing that's different is that um, it's possibly a positive or a negative in front of the x and a positive or a negative in front of the y depending on which quadrant you're in. So that x and y value corresponds to if I call, so I've already used theta, so uh, let's use phi as the angle here, this angle, this corresponds to cosine of phi and y corresponds to sine of phi and um, really those those values are good enough to help you find the rest as long as you know when you're positive and when you're negative um, so it's crazy to know it for these big angles when you can just know them in the first quadrant and uh, how do you how do you figure out what the right one to use again phi right the angle we're using um, sort of as the most important angle to us 
v there is just based on how far away from the x-axis you are in all of the other quadrants. So the mantra you want to think about with reference angles, the thing that should be going through your head is that you need to replace the angle you're given with how far away it is from the x-axis and then fix the sign so it matches. And so um, the way we use this in the actual example is doing something like taking cosine of 11 pi over 6. Right, and if you look at where is 11 pi over 6 on the circle, well, remember an entire circle, right, is 2 pi, and that's 12 pi over 6. So 11 pi over 6 is almost 12 pi over 6, and so it's got to be down here in quadrant 4. So here is there's 11 pi over 6. Now, that's fine, but remember we said we don't need that. We can just use this angle because our x values are going to be the same and our y values are going to be the same but opposite. So if I was to figure out what that angle is, it's the same as this. And that is just the distance back to the x-axis. Now that x-axis, if we keep going, is the 2 pi. It's the 12 pi over 6. So if we've gone 11 pi over 6, the amount we still have left to go is another pi over 6. So this angle over here is pi over 6. So we can replace this. It's the same as cosine of 11 pi... Oh, oops. Of course it's the same as 11 pi over 6. It's also the same as cosine of pi over 6. Now we have to be careful. Remember, we had x, y, and over here we would have negative x, y, and down here we would have negative x, negative y. This will be x, negative y, right? And that's the situation we're in. Now, this shouldn't be a surprise if you remember all students take calculus, right? Down here in quadrant 4, the quadrant we're in, that C means that cosine is positive. Since cosine is positive, we don't actually have to do anything here. Right? Cosine of pi over 6 is positive. It's in quadrant 1. Uh, cosine 11 pi over 6 is positive because pi over, 11 pi over 6 is in quadrant 4. And so when we replace 11 pi over 6 with pi over 6, we leave it alone. It's already positive. Let's do another one. Let's do sine of 4 pi over 3. You look at your circle. Now remember, pi is 3 pi over 3. So we got to go past pi, and so we're going to drop down here. And there's our 4 pi over 3. Now this angle, the angle back to the x-axis, right, that is our reference angle. This is our reference angle. And so how far past pi are we if we're at 4 pi over 3? The answer is pi over 3. So we write equals sine of pi over 3, because our reference angle is pi over 3. And then we have to remember all students take calculus. Down here, this says only tangent is positive. That means sine is negative. Since sine of pi over 3 is normally positive, and sine of 4 pi over 3 is negative, we fix this by adding the negative sign. So the idea here is to take this value, replace it with its reference angle, and then fix the sign. And that's it. That's the whole point of what you did in group work three. Group work four
uh, the group work for trig 4 had you um, take some angles, for example, had you take uh, maybe pi over 6 and then uh, 2 pi over 3, had you take these two angles, plop them on the circle, and fill out the sine and cosine values. And um, you noticed, or you should have noticed, that the angle between the two angles I drew is actually pi over 2, right? This angle there is actually just pi over 2. It's a right angle between them. And then uh, what I wanted you to notice was that when you have a right angle between them, when you start with an x, y uh, value and you add 90 degrees, its effect is to replace x with negative y and replace y with x. And so what you get is you get this function which takes x, y, and then when you add pi over 2 to theta, you get instead negative y x. Okay? So this is important and it's important because it's going to tell us what happens if we add if we add um, pi over 2 to our angle and then try to take sine and cosine. Right? So here's theta and here's theta plus pi over 2. Well the coordinate for theta was x, y, and the coordinate for theta plus pi over 2 was negative y, x. Now, remember, whatever is in the first coordinate is the cosine of the angle at the top. So cosine of theta is just x, and sine of theta, right, is whatever is in the second coordinate is just y. Well, look what happens over here in theta plus pi over 2 land. What is cosine of theta plus pi over 2? Well, remember cosine is always what is in the first coordinate. So it's negative y. But if we look over here, y is fixed. y is based on theta there. And so negative y is just negative sine of theta. So when you try to add pi over 2 to an angle and then you try to take cosine of the new angle, it's just negative sine of the old angle. Likewise, sine of theta plus pi over 2, well, that's just the second coordinate there. And so it's x. But if you look over here on the left, x is cosine of theta. So when you try to take sine of the angle plus pi over 2, it's just like cosine of the old angle. And so what we have, what we have here are these um, two new identities. We have that sine of theta plus pi over 2 is cosine theta, and cosine of theta plus pi over 2 is sine theta. So what we're adding, are we add, we're adding new rules so that whenever you have something you don't like, you can replace it with something you like. And it's going to help you combine things in the future. So um, the rest of the video dealt with, um, let's see, sine of theta plus pi and cosine of theta plus pi. And if we go to a circle, we take an angle and we go through this is pi and so if that's theta this little angle is theta plus pi and if that's xy that's negative x negative y and so what you should have seen um, throughout the group work was that when you add pi to something it just negates the original value so cosine of theta was the x value cosine of theta plus pi is negative the x value, so they just switch. And so sine of theta plus pi is negative sine theta, and cosine of theta plus pi is negative cosine theta. It just negates it for you. So that was that, and then lastly, we dealt with sine of negative theta,
and cosine of negative theta. And so if I draw another circle, if this is theta, then this is negative theta. Let's talk about that really quickly. Say you have an angle like theta equals pi over 2. What you do is you start in the right direction and you start adding angle until you get to pi over 2. If you have theta equals negative pi over 2, instead of going uh, counterclockwise, you now go clockwise because of the negative. Just like on the number line, if I tell you to plot positive 2, it's to the right, because you walk two units to the right, and if I ask you to plot negative 2, it's to the left. So negative angles just go in the opposite direction, clockwise instead of counterclockwise. So this has the same x value as this, and the only thing that's different is the y value changes. So if you have theta and your coordinate is x, y, and you have negative theta, then your coordinate is x, negative y. And doing the same thing as we did before, we can see that cosine of theta is x, and cosine of negative theta is also x. And that tells us that cosine of negative theta is just the same as cosine of theta, since x is x. We also see that sine of theta is y, and sine of negative theta is negative y, and this, combined with this, tells us that sine of negative theta is negative y, but y is sine theta is negative sine theta. So come back to our list. That's negative sine theta, and this is just cosine theta. There's terms for these. Sine and cosine are what we like to call um, odd and even functions. This function is odd, and this function is even. An even function doesn't care when you negate the input. It just gives you the old value. And an odd function uh, takes the, the negation and just waits, does the normal calculation, and then negates it afterwards. And so these are some of the new identities that we came up with. So those were the really, really, really the main points behind the two uh, group work projects. Uh, sorry this video wound up being a little bit long, but I wanted to de describe two things in just one video. Um, so go ahead, look at the group work, um, and then I will see you in class.